evening, everybody. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Boy, mark your mics way low. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Maybe can you take roll call, please? Yes, Mrs. Talby, Mr. Gilbert. Here. Mr. Detzel. Here. Mr. Heather. Here. Mrs. Lattery. Here. Okay, we always like to start our meeting off with the mission statement, and that is Northwest Local School District will create a responsive learning community where all students are valued, challenged, and guided along a pathway to success. First action is to adopt our agenda for this evening. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. So starting tonight, we have two special presentations to start with. The first presentation we have is Pleasant Run Elementary. Principal Jamel Weathers is here to um, talk about her building's positive behavior intervention and support program. Good evening. My name is Jamel Weathers. I'm the proud principal of PRE, and tonight I have three outstanding nights with me. First graders Harper and Lincoln Gambrel, and Kendall Whalen, a second grader. Once a month, we can use our points to buy things from the cash report. My favorite purchase. My favorite purchase was popcorn and movie. Purchase when they stuffed in the past. Good job. And mine was sitting in the principal's chair for the whole day. Do you know what all of our options are? Well, there's Play Doh, stickers, extra computer time, tattoos, snack pass, pajama pass, stuffed animal pass, and hat pass. There's also tell a joke on the announcements, slide pass, basketball with Mr. Barry, pizza with the police, lunchtime with the principals, and donuts with the deans. With PBIS, 
we also have experience days. Winter and spring have different options. I like cookie decorating. I like doing a gingerbread house. I like the hot chocolate delivery. <laughs> In the spring, we are looking to offer some of these opportunities, but we haven't, and I haven't planned the spring yet. So if you'd like to come and offer something, we'll, we'll take any help we can get. Um, this year, we also added two Castle Club Community Kindness Days. In the winter, me and my buddy packed up winter hats and gloves for the needy. Just last week, me and my buddy picnic kindness rocks to put in different places in the neighborhood. School, school is about learning, but being kind and being kind, respectful, and reflective helps us learn better. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? We did a good job, didn't we? <laughs> All right, next we have our winter competitive music and athletic recognition. So Mr. Garing will introduce that. Well, good evening, everyone. If we could just take one moment. If you are along the back side, could you shift your way up to the side? We got some folks in the foyer that I would love to make sure get to be a part of what we're doing. So again, if you could kind of shift your way around. Yep, just like that. If you're currently blocking the doorway, just shift on around. Keep going. You're doing great. Thank you to my early movers. And of course, everyone else, keep on moving that way if you can so we can get everyone to come from the foyer on inside. Thank you so much, everyone. Looks like we're just about there. Just about there. Well, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to celebrate for uh, our winter sports and music groups as well. Uh, the way that we're gonna function this, because there are a lot of you, which is fantastic, is that as I bring each school forward, that school's participants, the students, will come along this blue line right over here. Those who are presenting will kind of come up towards me, and then we'll each acknowledge the group by group, and, and the kiddos will come over, grab their certificate, and stand in front of the board just for a moment. After that group is finished, before we move on to the next group, we'll circle them on around, they'll hop back into the blue line. After we're finished with the entire school, that is when the group's gonna come up, and I know it's important to the board to engage, and so they're gonna come up right across the stage to meet with you. Okay, so that'll be at the end of each school that you'll come across the stage and then find your way to your seat. When we're done with all five of our schools, everyone is gonna shift to the gym and we're gonna take five group pictures, five group pictures in there, and then there's an alternate exit over there if you're looking to make your exit, that'll be the time and the place to do so. There's an extra door over there as we make our way out. So that's the plan for this time. With that being said, we're gonna welcome up our first building, let's welcome Corey Middle School students. Come on over, Corey Middle School, onto the blue line right over here. CMS students, yep, come on over. Come on over, come on over. Come on, come on forward, yep, you're doing fine. 
everyone who's uh, in your staff. Come on forward. Perfect. All right, I'll turn these over to the principal, Mr. Moore. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Gehring. Good evening, members of the board, superintendent. Um, so I'm going to be announcing uh, our students that maintain GPAs between 3.0 and 4.0 for our first semester. Uh, and we want to acknowledge uh, GPAs as well as some pretty cool uh, recognitions. Uh, we have a young lady named Valencia Cates, who is part of our wrestling team, and she is the first girl to win the Taylor Tournament. Our next awards are for students uh, from our volleyball team that maintained uh, 3.0 to a 3.4. Uh, for outstanding accomplishment, uh, Kayla Rasnick. Some of our students are not here, but we're still going to honor them, right? We have Riley Scott, Naomi Turner, Cameron Foley, Kaylin Cates, Anna Ponting, and Yasira Wooten. Okay. All right. Sorry, folks, there's a lot of stacks here. We had a lot of good students at Corey Middle School. Our next one goes to our golfers, Kylie Gears, maintaining a perfect 4.0 during the season. We have uh, Landon Steele, 3.0 to 3.4. Kaysen Edelin, 3.0 to 3.4. Mr. Eli Bogan, 3.5 to 3.9. Connor Graber, 3.5 to 3.9. Chandler Bryant, perfect 4.0. Mr. Dylan Roberts, 3.5 to 3.9. Mr. Luke Bogan, perfect 4.0. Next up, we have our cross-country runners, Ariana Dunleavy, 3.0, 3.4. Jessica Lynn, 3.0 to 3.5. Silas Ravenscraft, 3.0 to 3.6. Brooklyn Brown, perfect, 4.0. And Luke Thielen, perfect, 4.0. All right, we're on our football players. Mr. Colton Stegman, 3.0 to 3.4. Aiden Lanza, 3.0 to 3.5. Maya Diego, 3.0 3.6. Liam Sanders, 3.0 3.7. Austin Talby, 3.0 3.8. Zamari Andrews, maintain a 3.0. Lloyd Dixon, 3.0 to 3.1. Braxton Alexander, maintain a 3.5. Daniel Seip, 3.5 to 3.9. Nathan Mancini, perfect, 4.0. And Mr. Jeremiah Smith, also a perfect 4.0. I know, yes, I'm still up here, because there's more at Corain Middle School, where things are great. All right. We also want to represent some of our wrestlers. Mr. Braxton Alexander, GMC runner-up for the 86-pound weight division. Andre Burks, wrestling, GMC champion for the 160-pound division. And Azira Gervin, wrestling champ, 98-pound division. Thank you. Next, we want to bring up Pleasant Run Middle School. We'll have our students right over here on the blue line. Pleasant Run Middle School students, come on over onto the blue line, please.
right, it's my honor to welcome Mr. Horde, Athletic Director of Pleasant Run Middle School. It's my honor this evening to be here in front of all you parents and well as the school board. Thank you very much for being here. Um, at this time, I want to introduce Ms. Erin Ferrante. She's our assistant principal at Pleasant Run Middle School. Good evening. First, we're going to honor all of our winter athletes, basketball and wrestling, who were able to maintain honor roll while playing a sport. First up is wrestling, Jordan Samuelson, Academic Perfect Honors. Jacob Morris, Academic High Honors. Ken Gilbert, Academic High Honors. Donovan Anderson, Academic High Honors. Carson Faust, Academic High Honors. And now we are moving into basketball. Uh, Ziante Smoot, Academic Honors. Christopher Walker, Academic Honors. Chandis Donald, Academic Honors. Javion Jackson, Academic Honors. Girls Basketball, Anaya Brown, Academic High Honors. Halima Ba, Academic Honors. Esta Bahati, Academic Honors. Kamaya George, Academic Honors. Araya Matthews, Academic Honors. Leah Woods, Academic Honors. Riley Cotton, Academic High Honors. Sydney Gutnick, Academic High Honors. Demaya Locke, Academic High Honors. Christian Wharton, Academic High Honors. Anaya York, Academic Honors. Emily Dunlop, Academic Honors. Sade Roberts, Academic Honors. Back to boys basketball, Justin Bays, Academic High Honors. Tristan Turner, Academic High Honors. Christian Bailey, Academic Honors. Amari Marsh, Academic Honors. Thank you, Ms. Ferrante. At this time, I would like to announce the um, Award of Excellence to our wrestling team this year. Um, we had a very successful year this year, and these boys were something else. Clavon Carter, outstanding accomplishment, champion in the SWAC League at 205. Blessler Salias, runner-up, 160 pounds. Langston Riley, runner-up, 150-pounder. Ken Gilbert, runner-up, 104. Mark Brogdon, runner-up, 92. Runner-up, 86, Evan Ashers. And runner up 80 pound, Jacob Morris. At this time, I'd like to announce our cheerleading coach, Ms. Yana Smith. I am the cheerleading coach at Pleasant Run Middle School. Um, I want to honor Madeline Thomas for academic high honor. Aaliyah Williams, academic high honor. Brielle Evans, academic honor. Taylor Griffin, academic honor. 
Kalia Siplin Austin, Academic Honor. Shaden Tritt, Academic Honor. At this time, I would like to announce our very own eighth grade coach for basketball. He's one of our own. He came through the Pleasant Run Middle School, through our high school, and he's now giving back, which to me, that's just unbelievable. Kobe Brown. Thank you, Mr. Hoard. Um, I'm the eighth grade basketball coach. Um, I'd like to bring up my players uh, for winning back-to-back -back championships in the SWAT. Uh, our final record over the two years was 26 and two. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to give these guys some recognition um, and for their for what they did on and off the court. Um, they were good on the court. They were growing in the classroom and overall um, in the community. So I want to call you guys up. We'll start with Chandis Donald. There you go, Bugs. Kyron Sessions. Zeontay Smoot. Kobe Rucker. Kamar Rainey. Javion Jackson. Roberto Grant. Isaiah Wallace. And Isaiah Bowman. And for our players that aren't here, uh, we have Carson Faust, Sterling Willis, and Chris Walker. Um, we can give them all a hand. All right. If you guys want to make your way back over to the blue line on around, Pleasure Run Middle School, if you want to come towards me on a single foul line, come on up. Next, we'll have members of our White Oak Middle School uh, come on over. White Oak Middle School participants, step on over to the blue line, please. All right. I'm going to be filling in for uh, White Oak Middle School as, uh, as we honor some of these folks, same process along the way. We'll start things off with members of our honor band. Congratulations to Marissa Arendt, OMEA honor band participant. Henson, or Matthew Henson, Matthew Henson honor band participant. OMEA Honor Band participant Evelyn Stein. OMEA Honor Band participant Dashiel Suisse. OMEA Honor Band participant Robert Wagner.
We'll keep things going with the music department here. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Brooke Schoenberger. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Aiden Dufford. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Ryder Burdett. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Chloe Howard. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Molly Ritzy. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Kaylee Hadley. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Kellyanne Bayer. OMEA Honor Choir Participant, Mr. Simon Guerin. All right, we'll have you to swing on around. Back to over to the blue line. All right, next up we have our orchestra, OMEA Honor Orchestra participant, Jada Dewara. OMEA Honor Orchestra participant, Larissa Nelson. OMEA Honor Orchestra Participant Olivia Pegram. OMEA Honor Orchestra Participant Amber Romero Corpus. OMEA Orchestra Honor Orchestra Participant Arden Wilkerson. OMEA Honor Orchestra Participant Logan Sock Mercier. OMEA Honor Orchestra Participant Jacob Smith. We'll have you guys stay right there just for a moment. Next up, we have a couple awards of excellence. This is for basketball, eighth grade most valuable player, Ms. Runyon Coray. For seventh grade basketball, most valuable player, Garland Jennifer, or Jennifer Garland. And then two left for White Oak, award of excellence for outstanding accomplishment, exemplifying leadership, Ms. Claire Novacell. Also for exemplifying leadership and cheerleading, Deanna Waller. All right, we'll have you guys shift on around to the blue line. Next, we'll have Northwest High School participants line over here on the blue line. Northwest High School participants, come on over. From Northwest, if you're here to participate or to present, make sure you come up to see me. All my Northwest High School presenters, come see me. All right, we're gonna start things off with wrestling. Let's go, you got it. All right. 
So we're going to present some all-conference awards uh, to our wrestlers, uh, only a few of whom are here. So um, Braden Barnes uh, got a second-team all-conference. Uh, Tanner Felix, who is here, earned second-team all-conference. And uh, Caleb Jones, first-team all-conference. All right, next up we'll have our band come on up. Yep. All right, I have three awards for actually some middle school students from Pleasant Run who have participated in our high school jazz band this year. Uh, the first one is Josh Godbold, Isaiah Bowman, and Karis Bryce. to continue with more from our middle school who actually were able to participate in our marching band this year. Um, Isaiah Bowman, Karis Bryce, <laughs> Emma Butts, Mara Conley, Megan Conley, Gavin Cripps, Josh Godbold, Lily Kohler, Christian Monroe, Amaje Rose Hill, and Haley Woods. <laughs> and the last five are actually high school students who have participated in either the Tri State Band Symposium at NKU or the Wright State University Honor Band. The first one is Stephen Biddleman. Anthony Menchim. Dewash Rizal. Madison Holt. And Graydon Huchthausen. All right, if you guys want to walk on around, hop back into the blue line for me. Next up, we'll have boys. Boys basketball. All right, we're going to bring our guys up here. We're going to recognize them for some individual accomplishments, but also for um, winning SWAC championship uh, for the second year in a row. Uh, first of all, we have Darian Blaine, who won the SWAC Sportsmanship Award. Carter Berg was honorable mention, uh, SWAC. Travante Thomas was second team, SWAC. Vernon Leonard was also second team, SWAC. Julius Gates was second team, SWAC. Isaiah Beck was second team, SWAC. Michael Humans was first team SWAC and also honorable mention District 16 Coaches Association. And Desai Bronson was also first team SWAC, honorable mention District 16, and honorable mention Southwest Ohio. All right, we'll have you guys circle on around to the blue line. Next, we have girls basketball. Hello, everybody. I apologize. I'm not in coach's gear tonight, so I got off of later work, so I apologize. Um, one thing I did want to mention in, in recognition of the boys and then our ladies is that uh, for league awards, we nominate, but we don't vote them. So this is by the peers, their coaches that go against them, see them play, 
and recognize their abilities and their talents and their efforts that they put forth. So just so you understand that we, we don't nominate them. I mean, we nominate them, but we don't vote them into these awards. It's the people that actually go against them that do that. Um, first off, uh, Elena Lappet. Elena? So she's, uh, this is our sportsmanship award. I oh, know she's here. Elena? She's here somewhere? Anyway, so Elena, first of all, being a freshman, coming through this, just displayed a lot of character because she went through a lot of injuries. Uh, one ending her season with a stress fracture in her back. But her commitment to playing and, 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 and battling through the injuries and, and, and being here for us, uh, clearly she earned this award. So I wanted to recognize her. Um, our next young lady is uh, Journey Leonard. Um, for her being a freshman playing varsity basketball, which is a tremendous task for freshmen jumping from middle school to high school, and then again nominating her and the coaches that went against her, recognizing her talent, her ability, her efforts, and everything that she she put forth on the court was amazing. And she did have a, she had a tremendous year for us. So, congratulations. <laughs> Dora Aikman. Uh, so Dora is one of these young ladies, and, and, and I know I'm, I probably shouldn't be doing all of this stuff, but I had to do it. Dora is one of these young ladies that she will battle hard, but then you go score the ball, and she go, mm-mm. <laughs> Pass, mm-mm. No, nah, don't put me on the spotlight. Don't, don't make me do this. Okay, but this is a young lady that increased her rebounding total by like six points, was uh, top three in five of the categories in SWAC. I mean, just a total improvement from last year. And I, I wasn't even coaching last year. I just, you know, saw them playing. I mean, but for her to be recognized again by her peers as far as what she brought to the court, I mean, especially rebounding and then even towards the end of the season, scoring and putting the ball up, <laughs> I was super proud of her. And she, she's only a sophomore. So, I mean, the, the talent and the growth is all there, and we're expecting nothing but great things from her. <laughs> Love you. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Lauren Brown. So um, I can't say enough about this young lady and, and, and her commitment and what she brings to the team. Um, last year, she averaged about 12 points a game. She was 20 points a game this year, uh, 10 rebounds a game. And so she's she not 6'7". <laughs> so she was going battling. But not only that, she led the league in steals. So she doesn't just score the ball, she defends. Um, and she was top, she was in five of the top categories, the top five in the league. Not only this, uh, being recognized for first team all SWAC, but she was also recognized by Southwest Ohio District Coaches Association, okay? And that's, that's top 24 in all of Southwest, which encompasses 33 high schools. So uh, just, just a tremendous upside, and she's only a sophomore. So, I mean, the growth, the opportunity, and the ability is all there. And I know that she comes from good stock. She's going to put the work in. So, Lauren, congratulations. <laughs> all right, team, you want to make your way on and around? Last but not least, we're going to recognize our bowling team. Our bowling team were SWAC champions. Let's hear it for them. All right, so we have both male and female, so we'll bring them up all together here. I have Vince Edwards. Oh. Vince Edwards is all conference. I have Carson Singleton, uh, conference bowler of the year. <laughs> Kyle Jackson, first team all conference. E.J. Walker, first team all conference. Congratulations, you guys just stay right up there just for a moment. And on to the ladies SWAC champions. Let's hear it for outstanding accomplishment district qualifier, Haley Goodman. Also Haley Goodman, conference bowler of the year. Absolutely. First team all-conference, Emma, Emma Woodall. First team all-conference, Alyssa Kennedy. First team all-conference, Jocelyn Samano. 
and second team all-conference Amaya Ortez. All right, if you guys want to make your way on around to the blue line. All right, last but not least, Colerain High School participants, I'll have you shift on over to the blue line. Colerain High School participants, shift on over to the blue run. All right, we're going to turn things over to Mr. Stoinoff, Athletic Director of Corrine High School. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, board, thank you for having us here tonight. As we can see how much us, we impact um, all of our students in our sports and all of our extras, so it's a great thing to see everybody here. Um, first, Blake Huffaker will come up, and he is going to uh, do some music awards, and Blake is our choir director at Corrine High School. Friends and family, you guys are welcome to enter the gym. We're going to take those group pictures in just a minute. We do have some more awards to give. We want to make sure we give everyone their honor. As Matt said, my name is Blake Huffaker. I'm the choir director at Coleraine High School. I have three students to honor today. They made the All-State Choir. They were selected as one of the top 120 singers in the state and well over a thousand singers auditioned for this from all over the state, so I'm very proud of them. Our three award winners are Riley Hay, Adriana Mayfield, and Lydia Manis. All right, we're going to start with uh, swimming now from the athletic portion. Um, so our first swimmer, Maddie Williams, is a district qualifier. Our second swimmer is Sadie Edstrom, and she was the GMC Sportsmanship Award. Jumping into bowling. Um, we had one bowler we're going to recognize, Rayshon Moore, and he was a district qualifier. Into boys basketball, we have two here tonight, Donovan Chambers and Phil Emery, and they were both District 16 honorable mention. All right, jumping into wrestling. Um, so th this was a big sport this year for us, had a lot of um, success here. So up first, DeMarco Cates. DeMarco was the GMC champ at 106. He is a district qualifier. He won districts at 106. And this weekend he went to the um, state tournament. He's a state qualifier and placed seventh in the state. Our next wrestler is Titan Kostoff. Titan won the GMC at 120. Uh, he is a district qualifier. He took first place at districts. He also qualified for state, and Titan is the first freshman in the history of Coleraine to qualify um, as a freshman for the state tournament, and he took seventh this weekend. His older brother, Kaiser Kostoff. Kaiser won GMC. Um, at 165. He was a district champ. He also won districts at 165. He was a state qualifier this weekend um, and took sixth place at state. And the great thing is they're all back next year. So very exciting about that. Um, our next one is Bryce Sears. Bryce is a GMC champ at 132. He was a district qualifier. He took third place at districts at 132. He is a three-time state qualifier, which is unreal. Um, 
And so, and he also, I'm sorry, yeah, and he's a three-time state qualifier. So Bryce Sears. <laughs> Those four qualify for state. Um, and again, it's the first time in the history of Coal Rain we've had, we've sent four individuals to state. So congratulations to them, Coach Hunter, um, and all their success. And we still have got more. Up next, we have um, Jordan Jackson. He was a GMC champ at 175 pounds. Um, he was also a district qualifier. Yes, and fifth at districts. Um, Bryson Wolserbacher, he was a district qualifier. And then Jack Slavin was a district alternate. <laughs> On to girls basketball, we had Alana Miller. Alana was second team all GMC and district 16, third team all-star. All right, jumping into academic quiz team. Layla Klotz was first team all GMC. Cade Ott was second team all GMC. And Izzy Fry was the sportsmanship award for our academic quiz team in the GMC. And then our last one from our chess team, um, Nishmore uh, Morgan is second team all conference in chess. I'm going to ask Mr. Gilling to come on up and help me for one more award before we shift. So let's hold tight just one second. Sean, where'd you land? I know you're around here somewhere. He was just here. There he is. Come on up. We'll have you guys come across the stage in just one second. So somehow in all of the excitement, we, we missed one Northwest athlete. And it's pretty important uh, because as sophomore last year, she was a state placer in high jump in the spring, and she competed in winter track uh, this year, and she won the state uh, last weekend in the high jump as, as a junior. So, uh, DeAsia Cotton. families we're going to make that big shift as soon as they come across we're going to meet everybody in the gym for pictures so you can make your way on over there uh, we're going to make our way one last round of applause for all of our athletes and musicians what a great night so families we are going to make our way into the gym for pictures we're going to get those things grouped by school Oh, hand gel, hand gel, yes. That's freaking impressive. Yeah. 
Well, you know, now, these now the expectations are going to be <laughs> Well, you know, I got nieces and nephews, and they call him personal coaches. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot different. Yeah, it's a lot different. Yeah. We would finish one sport and start the next one. Yep. You know, yep. Right. All right, well, we'll continue on with the meeting. Uh, next on our agenda is the Student Achievement Liaison Report by Nancy Slattery. All right, we have a few different things to report tonight. We'll start first with academics. Um, Coray Middle School um, top 25 students were awarded induction into the National Junior Honor Society. And to be considered for this membership, applicants must excel in five standards, that being leadership, citizenship, character, service, and scholarship. In our honor students are Eli Bogan, Brooklyn Brown, Chandler Bryant, Durga Chapinon, Lincoln Duber, Kyle Easton, Kayla Fisher, Kylie Gears, Josie Gosselink, Connor Graber, Connor Greenwell, Sarah Knall, Ellie Lawson, Nate Mancini, Forsythia Monoscleros, Anush Patel, Jamie Perez Castro, Anna Ponting, Norman Ray, Anderson Scott, Alexandra Sierra, Sophia Steinbuck, Lydia Taphorn, Andrew Williams, and Dakota Winters. So we congratulate all of them. They have bright futures ahead of them, and we're very proud of them. Uh, next in academics, our fifth grade access uh, program from Struble, Montfort Heights Elementary, and Taylor Elementary enjoyed an educational field trip to the downtown Cincinnati Public Library. Um, here the students learned how to do research. Uh, they searched for books and they also participated in an online scavenger hunt. And then they also explored the library's marker space, maker space, where each student created a button. So we congratulate them on learning great new skills that will serve them well in the future. Uh, next we have the kindergarten class from Montford Heights Elementary. And they've been learning about community workers and community servers. Um, they met with the men and women officers that protect us and maintain the peace for us at the Coring Township Police Department. They were also able to see the trained dogs that form the canine unit. Their next stop was to visit our heroic firefighters of the Green Township Fire Department on West Fork Road. Um, here they learned about fighting flames and saving lives. Their next stop was in the world of dental health at daily at dentistry. Here the students received instruction on dental hygiene such as flossing and brushing. And their last stop was right within their own school cafeteria where cafeteria manager Robin Patrick and staff taught the students about food prep for the school. So those were opportunities for them to learn about their community helpers and explore other areas of life. Um, our next area in academics is for White Oak Middle School. They had students that participated in the Business Professionals of America competition at the state level. Um, they had 15 students that competed and 13 of those advanced to nationals. Nationals will be held May 10th to the 14th in Chicago, Illinois. The qualifiers for nationals are Bryson Bolte, Jada Diawara, Olivia Henschen, Alyssa McCarty, Rylan Prather, Haley Pruitt, Sophie Richardson, Amber Romero Corpus, Mallory Schrott, Micah Sock Laguna, Logan Sock Mercer, Charlotte Tekix, and Emma Trosper. So we want to congratulate all them and good luck at nationals and in their future business professions. We also had students from Corrine High School that participated in the Business Professionals of America competition. And we had students that placed in the top 10 in the state in their event. And those students were Laura Lee Allen, Ethan Cooper, Cameron Hamilton, Elijah Thompson, Jamari Jackson, Caleb Mitchell, Harrison Betcher, and Parker Vernon. So congratulations to them on a job well done. Our next stop in academics is the Houston Early Learning Center where they celebrated Black History Month. Um, here the students learned about prominent black history figures, including Martin Luther King, Mae Jameson, Rosa Parks, Garrett Morgan, and many others. Um, the students learned that they can accomplish anything as long as they dream it, believe in it, and work hard for it. And that, what a great life lesson for our future leaders. Let nothing stop you. Um, next in academics is Pleasant Run Elementary. In the month of January to February, they had 70 additional students reach the expected benchmark of 10 points or more in the IXL program. 
So that's a great job on continued dedication to learning and achieving goals, and we're very proud of them. Um, next, we will switch to athletics. We had some students from both Northwest and Corain High School who have signed on to participate in collegiate sports. Uh, we'll start with Corain High School first. We had Leah Kaiser, who was going to go to Thiel College for softball. We have Gary Oglesby, who is going to Wittenberg University for football. Ilya Gligorov, who is going to Thomas More University for football. Summer Swartout, who will go to Cedarville University for track. And Haley Shell, who will go to Marietta College for soccer. And then from Northwest High School, we have Kyle Jackson going to Muskingum University for bowling. E.J. Walker going to Muskingum University for football. Brandon Rice going to Muskingum University for football. Braylon White going to Wittenberg University for football. Windez Bates going to Simpson University for football. And Marquise Andrews going to Muskingum University for football. So we congratulate them and wish them the best in their uh, collegiate sports and academics. Uh, next, we'll go on to citizenship. And with citizenship, we start with our Houston Early Learning Center, where the pandas have been learning how to deal with their feelings uh, through self-awareness and self-regulation. And they were giving kits to take home to their family called the Calm Corner Kit. And they were able to practice their skills at home with their family. In addition to this, three of the young pandas got to be on Local 12 News and demonstrate uh, their use of the Calm Corner. So way to go, pandas. Uh, next, we have 40 Struble students who were recognized at the Blue Jay Breakfast on March 1st. And this was for their good behavior in the PBIS program. The students enjoyed breakfast with the parent or guardian, and then they received a t-shirt and award with a personal message from their teacher. And what they had to do was excel at taking care of self, others, and school to be considered for this award. So good job to those Blue Jays. Um, next in citizenship, we have Taylor Elementary, and they have been focusing on different traits each month. And last month, they focused on kindness, the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate to others. And they celebrated 38 students who received that award. I don't have their names, but congratulations to all of them. Uh, in the next area of citizenship, we have Pleasant Run Middle School. And each month, the staff there selects 25 students who embody what it means to show pride. Um, and pride stands for positivity, positivity, respectful and responsible, integrity and intelligence, dependability, and excellence and engagement. So the students receive a lunch and then they get a certificate and a Knights t-shirt. And the students who were awarded this past month are Cameron Sofer, Jada McCraney, Jonathan Contreras, Kamaya Elise Haysbert, Demaya Locke, Isaiah Bowman, Chase Pope, Leanne Price, Alexis Gutierrez, Anaya Coates, Lasani Sales Mahaya, Layla Anaruma, William Tilton, Alphonse Alex, Amaya Adu, Shyla Garcia, Kyle Moore, Christian Morton, Simone Williams, Carson Sparks, and Emmeline Ganant. So we congratulate them all on displaying exemplary behavior and living up to their potential. And our next in citizenship is for the White Oak Warriors, and they earned a pizza with the principal luncheon to honor their accomplishments and receive a certificate and then also get to pick an item from the PBIS school, school store school. Um, those students are in sixth grade we have Team Elite which is Ethan Witt and Jalen Consigu. In Team Imagine we have Alice Monetre, Nilish Gautam, Riley Jones, Tayana Thomas, and Rashid Tamasina. On the Dream Team we have Remy Ott, Anna Zok, Connor Olivius, and Dariana Asbury Everidge. In seventh grade, we have Team Valor, which is Jacob Walden and Cadence Alcorn. We also have Team Champion, which is Chloe Howard, Fure Uwamo, Lily Harris, and Robert Wagner. And then we have Team Tenacity, which is Brooks Taylor, Deshelle Seuss, Dimitri Dominguez, and Armani Simpson. In the eighth grade, we have Team Perspective, which is Aiden Doan and Stephen Lackey. And then we have Team Unity, which is Brooke Schoenberger, Heat Patel, Colton Kana, and Marissa Ahrens. And then we have Team Wisdom, which is Devon Dukes, Jamie Dorfline, Menar Quassum, Xavier Pack, and Zach Young. And then in the electives category, we have Arabella Nichols, Armani Lavender, Daniel Jimenez Perez, Victor Brandon, Eddie Joe, Paris Reynolds, Siddharth Suba, Kamora Brown, and Kira Menetray. So keep, keep, keep shining and your goodness and admirable traits will be contagious and catch on to your classmates. Uh, next, we have the uh, category of extracurricular activities. And at Coleraine Elementary, we have the Access Teacher Jill Darling, who was awarded a grant through UC 
and through the Greater Cincinnati STEM Collaborative. And with this grant, um, they are able to form the STEM Club, which consists of 11 girls and 10 boys. And UC provides them with two printers that are 3D printers. And they also provide a curriculum which teaches the basics of simple and compound machines, as well as potential and kinetic energy. They also provide the budget for them for materials and snacks for their club. And then the highlight of the club is a field trip to UC to showcase what they've learned. And, and UC pays for the busing and for the lunch there. And then some of the sponsors and donors of the grant also show up there and show the kids how 3D printing and STEM is used in today's world. So that was fine work by Ms. Starling getting, getting the grant. And that's a great learning opportunity for the STEM club. And these dedicated and passionate students actually show up before school to do this club. So congratulations to them on a job well done. Uh, next in extracurriculars, we have the Multicultural Club at Strubel Elementary, and that club has been incredibly busy. Um, they've been studying about continents and have showcased these projects that they've made for students, parents, and guests from the administrative office. They also participated in a Google Meet where they met with members of an acting troupe from Hawaii. Um, the students then shared the knowledge they learned from the acting troupe with students in second grade. Um, students in second grade will be going to the Aronoff for an upcoming theater, pr theater presentation, and this is information that will be helpful to them when they go to the presentation. So excellent work that they've done in a beautiful way to give back by sharing their knowledge with the other students. Um, our next category is service, and we have the Taylor Elementary Student Council that is working with the school to collect personal care products for the community. Um, last, we have fine arts, and We've already discussed some of those in the program tonight for the White Oak Middle School, but we do have some for Corain High School, and um, we already did the Northwest High School students also that participated at the Wright State Honor Band. So for Corain High School, um, the Corain Chamber Orchestra participated in the OMEA Association competition on March 2nd, and they received the highest ranking of one. And the ranking of one indicates that it's been an outstanding performance with very few technical errors and it exemplifies a truly musical expression. So this rating is only given for truly outstanding performances. So we should be very proud of them. So the members of the chamber orchestra are Max Gregory, Danny Mitchell, Sarah Beth Cruz, Sophia Gaddis, Alexandra Zamora Gerdes, Deja Young, Angelina Marino Fox, Maya Nevis, Cameron Rhodes, Bintu Washington, Ashley Heibel, Asher Combs, Maddie Meyer, and Jeff Stewart. So we congratulate those music truly gifted musicians and hope they continue to share their music talents throughout their own future. Um, and then that is, uh, oh, we have one more, I'm sorry. Um, we also have the Wind Symphony uh, from Corrine that competed Friday night in earned a superior rating from the OMEA Association's large group contest. Um, this qualified them for state performance at the end of April at Wright State University. Um, and Corrine is not qualified for the state level competition since 2008. So what a huge accomplishment for this group of uh, students. And those students are Bradley Alcorn, Gracie Angelo, Madison Bratfish, Noah Gears, Brandon Griffith, Anthony Hamilton, Cameron Hamilton, Elias Harmon, Faith Harris, Karma Harris, Quinton Hart, Madeline Howard, Elliot Hoyes, Christina Carty, Julian Kaufman, Matthew Mikes, Cecilia Matiska, Haley Moore, Katherine Ossenschmidt, Jose Perez, Brittany Perez, William Ratz, Caleb Redford, Soraya Robertson, Christopher Romero, David Schwetman, Raiden Sock, Trinity Trapp, James Wagner, Erica Watson, Ryan Wilson, and Stephanie Wilson. So we want to congratulate all of these students and their educators on a job well done, and we encourage them to continue to develop their heart, mind, soul, and body to become their best selves, and what a great inspiration they are for all of us. You're welcome. Do you need a break? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot, yeah. Um, no Butler Tech update? No. Okay. Not tonight. Uh, legislative update, Chris? Mark, I uh, just have one thing. Um, the uh, Ohio Senate unanimously voted to concur with the House changes to Senate Bill 17, which would require the State Board to update the standards and model curriculum for financial literacy and entrepreneurship in grades 9 through 12 to include free market capitalism content. Um, the bill now heads to Governor Mike DeWine, who is expected to sign it, and that is it. Great. Thank you. Okay, next 
uh, any reports from any employee organization? Yes, we have three employees who have requested an audience with the board. First up is Cassie Harkey, who is a counselor at Taylor Elementary. Good evening. I want to first thank you for giving me the time and space to talk about something that's been on my heart. I'm an elementary school counselor that has taught SEL the past four years. I'm also the product of a Catholic private school. I'm currently raising my daughter, who is a student at Taylor Elementary with these values and faith. I hope everyone hears me when I say, as a Catholic mom and teacher, I would never teach content that goes against my core values. The things I see on the media painting a negative picture of SEL are incredibly untrue and rather ridiculous. But if I'm being honest, I also believe these rumors and assumptions before moving into the public school world in 2014. I quickly learned that the needs of our students we're serving are even more intense and alarming than what I could have imagined. The reality of needs in 2024 is so dramatically different and harder than even 10 years ago. We are a public school, which means whatever student walks through that door, we adapt to meet their needs. We work every single day to try and help our Tigers be good humans because a lot are simply not receiving those skills at home like I did, like my kids are, and like 20 plus years ago was the standard. I know the preschool and elementaries would agree that every single year, the babies that show up in August are progressively less and less equipped to function at school. Kids are witnessing violence, drug use, sport acts, and expected to come to school, sit and learn. When we get students coming through our doors that have not had a positive traditional home life experience, we have no choice but to teach them how to be humans. And in my opinion, we're teaching them to be dang good ones. The skills I teach in SEL are life skills that every human being can benefit from. This includes my daughter, who does have two incredibly involved, educated parents. She's learning how to self-regulate when she's mad. She's learning how to work through conflicts with her peers in real time. She learns how to set goals. She learns about empathy and so much more. Why would I not want my daughter to gain more skills in these areas? The SEL content that's being taught at Northwest Local is nothing more than enrichment to help produce better citizens to live in our community. We have without a doubt seen this work showing its fruit in the elementary world. Nothing fills my bucket more than seeing an escalated student be able to verbalize what they need, get it, and get back into the learning environment without a referral needed. I'm excited for the middle and high schools to get these kids that have had these skills taught and see how much more time is put back into academics. Is the work hard? Yes. Does it take more time? Yes. Do the kids deserve it? Absolutely. I will never stop advocating, teaching, or encouraging our kids. I'd love for anyone that still is confused or has questions or concerned about what SEL looks like, specifically at Taylor Elementary or Northwest Local, to come watch one of my lessons. Watch it be put into action every day in our buildings. I'm beyond proud of the work that we pour into these students in this district, and I'm grateful for the admin support that we have to do this. Thank you for your time. Next, we have Noel Kist, who is a Dean of Students at Taylor Elementary. Good evening. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight and share my story. I'm Noel Kist, and I'm currently the Dean of Students at Taylor, and I have been for the last four years. Before that, I taught fourth grade within our district. I also have a daughter in kindergarten in the district. I am a proud product of Northwest Local School District. It's been a long time since I started second grade at Ann Weigel in 1997 and graduated from Coleraine in 2008. I can honestly say that Northwest Local feels and looks a lot different, and I couldn't be more proud of that. I'm so grateful that the teachers, staff, administrators, and CSO have adapted to the world we live in and continue to shift and adjust to do what is best for the students we are serving now. Just like in any career, change is inevitable. And we can choose to adapt and embrace the change or continue to wallow in our thoughts of how things used to be. I truly believe that Taylor Elementary is a special place. Our teachers are not just educators, they're mentors, counselors, and advocates for the students' well-being. Each day, they choose to return to our school, not merely to teach curriculum, but to invest in the lives of children. They understand that every student comes with a unique set of needs, challenges, and strengths. I can't speak for them, but I see them, showing up every day. 
And if they didn't believe in their hearts that the work we were doing is important, they wouldn't keep coming back. Most of my days are spent supporting teachers in the work that they do and providing assistance as needed when, directions in, when disruptions in their classrooms ensue. I also see and help process every referral in our building, and I can honestly say this year feels different. By no means am I saying that I have idle time. I'm saying that the need for emergency support within our building is down. I'm saying that the systems we have in place are working. Teachers are teaching and students are learning. For third quarter alone, we are down 115 referrals from this time last year. This means that the systems and the proactive work that we are doing is working. We were able to implement a zone program this year and data proves that it is effective in providing a space for escalated students to regulate them themselves using skills they're taught in SEL and in their classrooms. They're able to re-enter their classrooms and not disrupt the learning of others. We have added the support of our incredible RBT and BCBA in supporting our Tier 2 and Tier 3 behavior plans, and students are making progress. On one hand, as a dean, I'm able to give consequences, and then on the other hand, I'm partly responsible in creating behavior plans and working with families to proactively change behaviors and support students. I wouldn't be in my position if I didn't think that consequences are important and necessary when our code of conduct is violated. But at the end of the day, I chose this career path because I'm devoted to making a difference in the lives of kids. We owe it to them to do whatever we can to teach them and shape them into successful citizens. My job would be a lot easier if I gave a consequence and moved on, but by doing so, I would miss the golden opportunity to teach these students valuable life skills and foster a positive growth mindset. I invite any of you to spend a day in my shoes. Come see the amazing work that is being done at Taylor. And don't give up hope that we aren't doing it right, because we're doing it right and doing what's best for kids every day. Thank you. Our last employee is Melissa Nelson, District Behavioral Coach. Good evening. See if I can do this without my readers on. Never know. Um, I want to really thank you guys for letting us speak with you this evening and everyone else who is here. My name is Melissa Nelson, and I've been teaching in this district for 33 and a half years. I've served as vice president of the Teachers Association for four years and as president for four years. 25 years ago, the biggest problem I faced at White Oak Middle School was whether or not we would allow students to chew gum in school. Times have certainly changed. And whether you're a student or a teacher or an administrator, job is hard. Navigating the laws, the mandates, the restrictions of public education without the necessary funding is even harder. But we are doing our best to meet these challenges head on by providing not only consequences when they are warranted, but intervention when it is needed. Last week, Dustin Gehring talked about some of those interventions we provide to our students. I'd like to highlight just a few of them. We have created and have implemented an RTI process that allows us to identify those students who need individualized behavioral and academic support and then create intervention plans designed just for them. We provide therapeutic support to those students and families that have experienced trauma and loss. We have care coordinators that bridge the gap between home and school and support our families. We offer a day treatment program for our students who exhibit intense emotional and behavioral challenges. We provide a diversionary court designed to help families problem solve so that our children can access the education that we provide. We have a district social worker that works tirelessly to provide food, clothes, and even Christmas presents to our families that are in need, as well as parent workshops. She happens to be sitting right there. Our systems that provide intervention may not be perfect, but we continue to grow and improve in order to support the ever-changing needs of our students and our families. Being an educator is so much more than teaching the curriculum. 
through social emotional learning that you already heard a little bit about. We're also teaching students how to problem solve, how to communicate effectively, how to ask for help when they need it so that one day they will become productive members of society. The board asked last week, when is enough enough? The answer to this question has no expiration date. Enough will be enough when we have done all that we are able to do for children and have done it to the best of our ability. Thank you. For our consent items for tonight, um, from personnel, we have four retirements, five resignations, four change in status, as well as various supplemental items. We have one donation from Rumkey to the Corrine High School Theater Department, and we have vendor contracts for Corrine High School Prom, Corrine Township um, SRO support, and non-public Title I services as well as the curriculum for Aaron's Law Fight Child Abuse Resource, which was described to the board at the last meeting. With that, I recommend the board approve the consent items as listed. So moved. Second. Any questions or discussions? Passes four to zero. And Mark, before you move on, just to clarify, um, because I know this was a conversation last week around Aaron's Law, we will have communication that is going out to our families around that, multiple forms of communication, multiple times with the opt-out form that will be easily accessible for families if they want to opt out. So just to clarify for our families to watch for that communication, it will be coming soon. Great. Thank you, sir. So good evening. I'd like to ask the board to dispense with reading of and approve the special work session minutes from February 12th, our regular board meeting minutes from February 26th, and our special work session minutes on March 6th, as well as accept, approve, and appropriate a grant for Coleraine High School for a World Teen Mental Health Day, as well as the Coleraine High School Dance Team Fund. With that, I ask the board to approve the items as listed. So moved. Second. Any questions or discussion? This is four to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. And next we have a presentation for information. Um, the curriculum department has gone through an exhaustive process this year for a new elementary resource for English language arts. So Lori Reilly and the team are here to introduce the process and the recommendation, and then the recommendation will come back for approval at our next meeting. Good evening. I'm excited to be here today to give you an update on our journey around the science of reading. As you know, three years ago, our, our elementary team and teachers embarked on a journey to learn about the science of reading through our letters training. I am excited to tell you that as of last Friday, we have finished that journey. So our teachers are ready, they are willing, and they are very eager now to have some resources that align with their new learning. So one of the things we have done this year is we've been piloting two different programs that are tightly aligned to the science of reading. Today I'm here to give you an update on that process, to ask your vote to adopt a new curriculum for elementary beginning next year. However, I'm going to step aside and I am going to introduce you to members of my elementary literacy advisory committee. This committee was created to help review the data that we had available around the two programs and to ultimately make the decision about which program we thought was best for our students, our staff, and our community. So I would like to introduce Rachel Barnes, our district literacy coach, Lindsay Pleasant, reading specialist, Lisa Hadley, instructional coach, Susie Bischoff, second grade teacher. They're gonna tell you a little bit about the CKLA program. 
They're gonna tell you the strengths of the program. You're gonna learn a little bit about our adoption process that we went through to make this decision. And then you will also hear some perspectives from a pilot teacher and also a parent perspective tonight. So Amplify CKLA is also known as Core Knowledge Language Arts. It is a comprehensive program that is systematic, explicit, and focuses on both sides of Scarborough's reading rope. In kindergarten through second grade, those two are separated with 60 minutes of skills instruction daily and 60 minutes of knowledge instruction. And three through five, that those um, skills are integrated into integrated lessons as the students become more skilled readers with 120 minutes of instruction for third grade and 90 minutes of instruction for fourth through fifth grade. Our program overview, the simple view of reading is the bedrock of CKLA. We talked about that a little bit um, the last time that we talked about the science of reading. So if you remember the simple view of reading is word recognition times language comprehension equals reading comprehension. So we need both sides of the equation to be strong to get a skilled reader. So instruction starts with the sounds first approach that teaches 44 sounds and 150 sound spellings by the end of second grade. Each teacher will get a class set of decodable readers with engaging plots and characters that are used to, um, as a connected text for grades K to two. And vocabulary and writing skills are explicitly taught and reinforced in the skill strand. When we're thinking about the language comprehension side of the reading rope or the simple view of reading, CKLA is grounded in the science of reading. It builds knowledge and vocabulary both in um, the grade itself and across grades. Their students will participate in rich read-alouds and discussions. Student readers are where students will gain knowledge to answer literal, inferential, and evaluative questions. And students will be able to synthesize their learning through speaking and writing. CKLA is the closest program that we have found that is true to the science of reading with that explicitly taught phonics instruction and vocabulary and decoding skills that are embedded into the curriculum. The writing instruction follows the I do, we do, you do model, which is really important for the science of reading. It provides exposure to complex language and text as a means of supporting language development for our students. Each lesson includes multiple levels of questioning so that students can build that deeper knowledge and understanding. Lesson slides are provided so it allows teachers to see students work in real time. The knowledge and skills portion of CKLA is engaging for all students. The knowledge portion Levels, play, levels the playing field for all of our students in our district. Students are required and taught to cite text and evidence, which is really important for our upper grades during OST time. Each lesson has built in direct instruction that teaches upon all four domains that our EL students focus on and are tested on. With this program, our students are thinkers in their classrooms. Hi. I would love to tell you how the decision process went. Um, we, as an elementary literacy advisory team, met on Tuesday, March 5th. The team consisted of pilot teachers from all the programs, both programs in all the grades also a team of reading specialists, and then curriculum team members facilitated our day. The task of this committee to was, re to, was to review all the sources of data and feedback that we collected throughout the entire pilot. I'm telling you from an honest heart, no stone was left unturned. We saw everything. The committee was presented with data and feedback from a multitude of sources, community feedback night, parent surveys from both programs, mid-year growth data, pilot surveys from the pilot teachers, and reading specialist surveys. 
Teacher feedback was also collected from the teacher feedback night on February 28th. We looked at it all and read it all. And at the end of the work session, we spent a lot of time in small groups and whole group discussing, reviewing, deliberating all the information that we gathered. And we finalized our day by voting for the curriculum that best met the needs of all of our students and staff. And you'll see the results here. As you can see, CKLA received 100% of that team's vote that day, which is pretty monumental in my opinion. Good evening. I ha have been a teacher in Northwest Local School District for the past 25 years. Um, I'm currently teaching second grade at Taylor Elementary. Over the years, I've implemented various um, language arts programs. However, none of them have been as effective um, and as exciting to witness as CKLA in my classroom. CKLA provides students with exposure to rich, diverse content across various subjects. This not only enhances their reading skills, but also expands their knowledge base and their critical thinking abilities. This program provides high interest topics that are engaging for students. I want to share how the pilot program has impacted some of my families. Early on when I started the pilot, one of my parents had emailed me saying that his son was going to be absent due to the upcoming Diwali holiday. I emailed back and asked if he could send pictures of their family celebrating the holiday because we had just learned about that in class. The parent emailed me the pictures and the student was able to share his experience of him and his family celebrating the holiday as well as answering questions my students had asked. During parent-teacher conferences, a dad was commenting to me that his son loves all the different topics that we teach in language arts, and he hasn't stopped talking about the War of 1812. During another parent-teacher conference, a mom of a student was telling me that she has a friend who is Chinese, and when their daughters had a play date, my student was telling the family that she learned about Chinese New Year and the ways the holiday is celebrated. It's very exciting to hear that students are sharing their love of learning outside the classroom. I've never had students so excited and captivated during reading instruction as I have with this program. This program incorporates engaging activities and hands-on experiences to keep students motivated and actively engaged. A couple of weeks ago, I had three students enter the classroom and as soon as they unpacked, instead of eating their breakfast, they came up to the reading table looked at the globe, and immediately started talking about the secret trading routes on the Mississippi River and other details of the War of 1812. Keep in mind, these children are seven and eight years old. The pilot program has yielded a notable positive impact on students' writing abilities and attitudes. Through engaging activities, personalized feedback, and supportive learning environments, students have developed a newfound enthusiasm for writing. They now approach writing tasks with increased confidence creativity, and willingness to explore new ideas. My students have historically faced challenges with vocabulary acquisition, yet their progress in this area has notably improved since the implementation of the pilot program. CKLA has a strong vocabulary component offered in both the knowledge and the skills lessons on a daily basis. Through, system, through systematic instruction and frequent exposure to diverse word choices, students have expanded and refined their communication skills. Interactive activities and meaningful practice opportunities have reinforced the acquisition of new vocabulary, fostering retention and application beyond the classroom setting. My students are discovering the power of language. The pilot experience of implementing CKLA in my classroom has been overwhelmingly positive. The program's structured approach, rich content, and engaging activities have significantly contributed to the growth and development of my students' literacy skills. Through tailored instruction and diverse materials, CKLA has not only enhanced reading and writing skills, but also instilled a genuine love for reading among my students. The positive outcomes observed during this pilot period highlight CKLA's effectiveness in promoting academic success and lifelong literacy skills. As we move forward, I am confident that continuing with CKLA will further benefit my students and support their educational journey. Thank you. Oh, um, the first picture that you see here um, was when we had um, finished our first 
knowledge domain, which was fairy, tale, fairy tales and fables. And so my students, a lot of them dressed up in their fairy tale outfits. And then we, after we did tall tales and we had learned about John Henry and Paul Bunyan, we did a pancake breakfast to celebrate that. So you see there with their pancakes and their blue juice. And then um, one of my students, we had, when we had finished learning about the Chinese New Year and we learned all about the four river, the four main rivers in China, one of my students brought in um, a picture of the Great Wall of China. She was very excited and she let me keep it. She didn't even want to take it back home. So I thought that was really cool because now I have it for the future. So um, she was very excited to share that with us. I think that's the last one. Hi, I'm Lisa Hadley, instructional coach at MHE, but also the mom of three beautiful girls that are in our district. Um, this here is a picture of my daughter, Lydia. She's in fourth grade, and she was in one of the pilot classrooms this year. Lydia loves math. She loves science. She loves gymnastics. She doesn't like to read. She is a struggling reader, and we work on that all the time. This year in her classroom, she got to pilot the CKLA program. She came home like the third week of school and is telling me everything that she's learning about. She's telling me all about the Middle Ages, the plague, aqueducts. And she just goes on and on and on. And she's going, I want to go to the library. She doesn't ever want to go to the library. There's, no, there's not enough math or gymnastics there. She wants to go to the library because she wants to learn more about all the stuff that she's learning in CKLA. And as the year goes on, now you know she's learning about volcanoes and she's learned about poetry. She wants to read. Every night I'm telling her, you need to go to bed. And she's going, but look, I found this book. This program is helping her to become a reader. And I can't thank her teacher and this program enough for giving her that opportunity to want to learn and to enjoy learning. And that is why I am a strong believer that CKLA is the right program for our students at Northwest. As you can see, we believe strongly that this program is going to be a game changer for our students, our community, our families, everything. We have a lot of excitement around it. Uh, we have a lot of teachers eager to get their hands on materials. They want training now. And I said, hold on, got to get board approved. So um, we're super excited. We wanted to give you and honestly everyone out there who watches our board meetings just a little glimpse of what we have um, hopefully coming in our future. I will have resources before next board meeting out so anyone who wants to look through them, ask questions, I will be available. Uh, but for now, do you guys have any questions? Um, thank you for all the due diligence on this. Um, you know, as a board, I guess, I guess I can speak for this. We're not qualified to make a curriculum choice, so we rely on what you bring to us. So you know, we, we try to stay in our lane. For us, I think it's uh, what is the buy-in. Um, so like the instructional materials, things like that. You know, it, this is, will be inclusive with this programming and everything that everyone will need to bring this into the classroom will be included into the purchase of this curriculum. So our next step is that we will have a what we call a curriculum support team so that's part of our literacy advisory team it is going to be made up of teachers administrators and reading specialists it will be pilot teachers but also teachers that did not pilot either program so that they can look with a fresh set of eyes and question they will give recommendations on what parts we need to purchase um, we will look at the assessment pieces to see are the assessments we currently use the right assessments with this program. They will also give recommendations around PD, what it should look like, how often, what they think they need. So again, teachers will be driving some of the major decisions that we make around this. Awesome. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you, ladies. Thanks. And I just want to comment and really highlight the fact that this process um, it was a newer process that curriculum has been developing that really, and Mr. Scherz is here and was part of the team who made the decision, but the curriculum leadership team stepped aside and they facilitated the meeting and facilitated the review of the data, but they didn't vote.
the entire process was driven by and decision was made by the teachers and administrators at the building level who are closest to it. And so to say that we got 100% of a diverse committee to go through a engagement process like that and to make that final decision and recommendation unanimously from that core team is remarkable and it really speaks to the fact that you know as a district and as we move forward you know that teacher voice is really important and trusting that voice to make that decision and then supporting the implementation of that so I just want to give kudos and credit to the team who organized and led this as well as the team who really spent a full day digging through data quantitative and qualitative and really making the best choice for the district so thank you so will this be the new style for curriculum choice like this process that happened so i remember when we brought the math curriculum you know that was uh you know it was brought to our attention that mm -hmm. there was the numbers so we've there. definitely learned from that experience um, and i think for big purchases that impact a large number of teachers so with a K-5 adoption, that's not just a, an expensive purchase, but it impacts sure. a good amount of our teachers. This is a process that we will probably continue to use to make sure that our te teacher voices are heard. Some of our smaller adoptions, such as maybe a high school course that only impacts a few teachers, we still will do a process with them that allows all their voices, but obviously it won't need to be as large as this one. Sure. Um, to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. Oh, that's awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Yader. Okay, so just a couple of updates. Um, first, I just wanna give kudos to Corrine Township and the Corrine Township Police Department. They hosted the Guardian Games. It's the first of what we hope to be an annual event where 10 high school athletes from Northwest and 10 high school athletes from Coleraine came together. Each athlete was partnered with a police officer and they ran an obstacle, the police obstacle course, the one they used to train on. Um, and I was there and let me tell you, that was a grueling course. Um, but the officer ran it first with the student shadowing them, encouraging them. And then the student ran it with the officer shadowing, and encouraging them. They combined their times as like a competition and the camaraderie between our students and the police was amazing to watch. Um, our local credit, um, Cincinnati Police and Fire Credit Union provided lunch so they were able to not only compete together but eat together. Um, it was an amazing, um, really collaborative day and a wonderful experience for our students. So just thank you to um, Corian Township Administration and Police Department for organizing that day. Next, um, we do. We just had a professional development day. Um, that is the end of the third quarter. I do want to acknowledge that we have another professional development day coming up where students will not be in school on March 19th. That is an election day. Um, we typically, um, we do not have school on election days. We have professional development. Multiple schools are used as polling places and so um, making sure that in those moments are um, when we have the our buildings open to the community during an election, we don't have students on site. So um, just an acknowledgement that we don't have school on the 19th. It is an election day. And then finally, there's been a lot of conversation around um, an event that might happen on April 8th, a little thing called an eclipse. Um, it's gotten a lot of attention. And um, we've been monitoring a lot of data around the eclipse. and the impact it might have on schools. We've watched other schools in the area shift to a closed for that day, a professional development day, to a half day. So um, in preparation for this, as a district, we will be providing eclipse glasses to all of our students with some instruction around what the eclipse is because it is a monumental learning experience. With some of the most recent data that we've been able to look at from the Ohio Department of Transportation that uses some other data from other celestial events um, to model the impact it might have on our area. Um, and it uses different models of whether it's 
a smaller event where maybe only 150,000 or so people um, come to see it all the way up to more than 500,000. Um, some of that modeling is showing that um, there could be traffic impacts in the coal rain area with roads being heavily congested um, and potentially blocked um, with just stopped traffic. So um, based on that most recent modeling that we've gotten um, as a district, we will be moving to closing school on April 8th because of the potential impact on the um, dismissal process and traffic congestion. Um, so um, communication is going to be going out tonight to our families announcing this but we wanted people to understand the rationale why. Um, we did take our time and um, really look at all the factors to make sure that if we were making the decision, it was with the best possible data um, that we were able to get our hands on. So that communication is gonna be going out tonight um, around the closure on April 8th due to the eclipse. That's all I have. Any questions for Daryl? Uh, board member comments? Chris? Um, Mark just uh, wanted to compliment the gala committee that uh, is throwing the big bash Saturday night at Colerain High School. Their goal was to sell 400 tickets, and they're up over 500. Um, actually sold out. Uh, proceeds from this will go to the new field house through the boosters. And... Um, I'm not sure what to expect. I don't think it'll be too wild and crazy, um, but uh, it should be a lot of fun and I'll report back. Okay, okay. Uh, I just wanted to thank Lori and her group. Um, great presentation. Um, and I wanted to thank Jamel, uh, bringing in the first and second graders. It's always good to have kids and then all the recognition of all the athletes for the winter sports. That's it. Yeah, I would echo what Jim just said, and I also can't wait to see the CK, CKLA program that you're going to bring next meeting because it sounds absolutely awesome, and can't wait to see what it all looks like. Thank you. Um, it would have been fun to try to do this at the AO over on Bannied Road and watch Dustin sweat as he maneuvered everybody around. <laughs> would have been fun. Um, but I, th I always point out, you know, we're here for the kids, and so when we see – uh, the level of um, achievement that the kids uh, presented tonight with their teachers and coaches, it's, it's just amazing the um, effort that goes into it and really just how successful our, our student population is. I um, want to thank Lori and her team. Um, the last time we went through this, it was, you know, we, we're in a weird position because, you know, we get stuff from different directions. And we want the best decision for our district. And, you know, we're all learning as we go through this process. So the fact that we had some lessons learned, and um, I think that proves to the outcome of, of this. So we look forward to approving that when this gets brought up to us. Um, and uh, other than that, that's about it for me. Thank you. We'll adjourn our meeting. I need a motion in a second. So moved. Second. That pass is four to zero. Thank you everyone for their attendance this evening.